What's up YouTube photographer Ronix from Ronix Photography and today we are going to be doing the research for this image and this photo was taken by a Nigerian photographer he is called Adinoy I don't know if I got it right but he's called Adinoy on Instagram I'll put his link in the description of this video so we're going to be doing the retouching of this very image and usually when I'm going to edit my photos I put the photo in my Photoshop and a brief details about this image this image was taken using a nikon d750 yeah anti-zero image and it was taken using a 50 millimeter lens iso 100 at f3.2 at one one out of 100 of a second so uh, usually i start by pulling down my highlights and pulling my shadows up then i come to my blacks and i pull the way all down then I get my contrast I'm going to put it at around 9 that will do then my shadows at around 8 so I'll come to my clarity 7 and my vibrance at 5 because I want this image to pop so I'm going to come to my camera calibration and I'm going to play around with these sliders so I'm going to start with the green primary I'm going to put it at around 7 and I'm going to come right down to my hues and I'm going to put it at around 8 I'm going to come to my reds and I'll leave it at 3 so this is our result so far and I'm going to open the image in Photoshop so guys if you haven't subscribed and you're watching kindly hit the subscribe button to this channel and don't forget to hit the notifications bell so that you don't miss out new videos every time we upload so this image usually when I'm cropping my photos I crop them in a ratio of 8 8 by 10 so I click and I'm going to crop it all the way in because yeah, I want you guys to get attention on the face of this model this amazing photo is by I, I don't I don't know if I got the name right it is Adonoi photographer and he's a Nigerian photographer and he took this amazing image so I'm going to start by duplicating the background layer by clicking ctrl J on the keyboard to duplicate it so uh, we're going to retouch this image using frequency separation I'm going to be using a mixer brush tool in Photoshop so I'm going to be using two methods for this image reason being because I want to get more texture and I want to blend it more so I'm going to be using the mixture brush tool and I'm going to use the other frequency separation method of using the Gaussian blur by selecting and applying Gaussian blur on the skin so I'm going to give you this amazing trick of how to achieve the best results using the Gaussian blur method so duplicate the background click ctrl J on the keyboard come right here the action and click your freaking separation and play just continue and for this image I'm going to use a radius of around 11 you can just slide and see what works for you make sure you slide this until you you are kind of not seeing the texture of the skin so I'm going to leave it at around 11 for this image yeah you you slide your radius slider until you're seeing less of the texture on the skin so click ok and if you don't have this action i made a video sometime back about how to create your own freaking separation action so you can check it out on this channel click on the high frequency layer come and create the black and white uh, the reason that's why we create this black and white layer is because we want something to guide us uh, when we are trying to blend the skin tones together. Remember when using the mixture brush tool, we kind of blend the skin tones together that are kind of uneven on the face of the model. So pull the reds all the way down. As you can see, right now you can see where the skin tones are kind of uneven so I'll pull my whites up and I'm going to drag my reds somewhere at negative 38 and I close this 
select yellow frequency and make sure this is in the default just click right here then come right to your mixer brush tool and if you don't have it just right click it is always under the brushes in your photoshop so make sure this is unchecked and make sure it is a clean brush the wetness i'm going to use 11 percent the load at 75 the mix at 90 and the flat at 100 make sure sample all layers is not selected so make sure you're on your lower frequency layer so you're going to start blending and when you're blending make sure you remain within the highlights you blend the highlights alone the midtones alone and the shadows alone because we don't want to distort the shape of the model's face so just zoom in a little bit don't zoom all the way in so increase your brush size by using the left and right brackets on the keyboard and start mixing and blending the skin tones so as you can see we are trying to blend these skin tones together and while doing this make sure you take your time and you're not rushing because you really want to achieve the best results at the end of the day so right now we are blending the skin tones together so i'm going to keep on showing you guys the results as we are trying to do the mixing so turn off the black and white and this is the before after you can see it is really really subtle but the results are looking great so you can see before after before after so turn back the black and white and continue mixing as you can see we have a highlight here mix it alone separately then we have some kind of midtones here mix them alone then we have this mix it alone and we have this contour on the cheek of the model so we mix that so what you're doing right now you're trying to blend the skin tones together so that you can have even skin tones on the model but as we are doing this we are still retaining the texture on the model skin so we continue blending these these tones together as you can see i'm avoiding this highlight because i want to blend it separately and uh, before i applied my freaking separation action i made sure i'm going to remove the blemishes at the end of my mixing uh, because uh, when we're using the mixer brush tool we kind of flatten most of the blemishes so we shall have less work to do at the end of it also let me show you guys the before and the after so this is the before after before after you can see how amazing this looks turn the black and white on just double click here and pull the reds all the way down because we want something to guide us when we are mixing this vital area uh, without distorting the model's looks and the model's face click on your lower frequency and continue blending it the more because this image really really looks amazing yeah and i give credit to this photographer it really looks amazing and yeah i asked for permission to touch this image and yeah he gave me a go ahead to retouch it and yeah he was kind of giving a retouching challenge to photographers out there and if you'd like to edit the same image i'm going to put the link to his instagram in the description so that you can also try it out and see the results you you'll achieve while after retouching this image so yeah and uh, guys there are so many retouching challenges going on on instagram so many photographers are putting raw images and they want to see how you guys edit their photos so you can check out uh, on instagram and see how they retouch their images and you download the raw files 
and you also give it a try and see if at all you can achieve what they did or if at all you can achieve way way better results than they did so what we are doing we are trying to mix and blend the skin tones together so let me show you guys the before and after this is the before after before after you can see how amazing this looks so i'm going to zoom in because i'm seeing some little imperfection here and i'm going to try to blend this a little bit more because i have some dark patch here and make sure when you're trying to do your mixing of the skin tones make sure you don't zoom all the way in because you may end up distorting the model's looks and the shape of the model's face and it may not look natural enough at the end of the day so make sure you take your time you're not in a hurry while you're doing this and guys if you haven't subscribed this is a simple reminder kindly hit the subscribe button yeah and i'm going to be creating some skin tone looks so that you guys can see how to color grade your portraits uh, as you as you can see uh, i try to to zoom all the way in because i want to blend these tiny areas of the model skin yeah so right now i'm trying to blend this area on the nose bridge of the model i'm going to increase the brush and then blend this side too as you can see we have some mid tones here i'm blending them together and i'm going to reduce on the brush and i'm going to blend this part alone so we forgot something right here because we had zoomed all the way in so i'm going to come right down to the model's neck let me show you guys the results so far so this is the before after before after it is really really subtle and it looks amazing so we have some imperfect area right here and for this area i'm not going to turn my black and red because I want to achieve something nicer I should say this highlight so I'm going to come right to the neck area turn my black and white layer back on I'm going to blend this neck area and the mistake most retouchers and photographers do is they tend to only retouch the model's face and they tend to forget the other areas like the model's arms or the fingers and it, lo it looks unreal or imperfect at the end of it all so make sure you don't leave out the neck and the chest area of the model when you're doing your retouching so continue mixing and blending so as you can see i'm trying to rush i'm trying to rush and i don't want to make this video long because you guys may end up getting bored at the end of it all so i think we are done with this mixing right now let me see we forgot some mixing around this area so. so let me show you guys the results so far so this is the before after before after it is subtle and it looks clean so i'm going to come to my black and white turn it back on and i'm going to drag it drop it to the delete icon in photoshop click on my lower frequency and i'm going to select my lasso tool make sure your feathering is pretty high i'm going to use 30 and this time i'm going to zoom all the way in i'm going to come and select the area of the skin make sure you don't select the hair area yeah just come select this and select according to the shape make sure you're careful while passing over the eyebrows 
so yeah right now we have selected come to filter and come to Gaussian blur so remember what we did uh, already as was around 11 so usually when I'm doing this I make sure I multiply 11 times 3 I don't know how I calculated this but I found that this works better this way so if I multiply 11 by 3 that is around 33 as you can see the texture is still there so 33 or we can go in for around 32 for this image click ok so right now we are doing uh, we are trying to apply the Gaussian blur method by selecting and applying so come as you can see we have this highlight select it right click and apply the Gaussian blur I don't want to use shortcuts because I want you guys to follow along so come select this this contour and right click apply the Gaussian blur yeah continue doing the same for as you, as you can see guys I'm trying to select the model skin according to the shape of the area as you can see right now you're on the chin area select right click apply the Gaussian blur then we have right here it's all about drawing shapes and applying the Gaussian blur then right here you can see we have this pretty little shape apply I'm avoiding this highlight because when I apply the Gaussian blur we can we are going to lose out the highlights of this area so I'm going to leave out that area and I'm going to proceed with the other areas on the model skin sorry about this I'm going to come and I select right click apply the Gaussian blur so the trick is when you come to this nose area make sure you avoid applying it on the nose bridge this highlight because the nose is going to look artificial and unnatural because it will have lost these highlights so as you think I'm trying to draw on the other side of the nose so I've left out this highlight so I'm going to come right to this neck area and I'm going to draw the shape apply the Gaussian blur like this so and if you're learning something drop click the like and you can drop a comment on and give us more feedback about how I would have made this a better image so I think we are done with this method and so this is the before after before after and usually before I can do the sharpening for this image I come to my high frequency and this time I'm going to be removing the blemishes on this model skin so I'm going to use my clone stamp click on it and I'm going to zoom all the way in and I look for those blemishes on the model skin because at the end of it all these little little changes are the ones which make a difference to they bring that difference to your portraits so right now I'm sampling click Alt to sample then click over the blemish to remove it Alt then click over the blemish like that so I'm going to be quick enough but you can always take your time while you're removing these blemishes from the model skin so I'm going to come right here to right here and I'm going to sample and paint over these blemishes I'm trying to be fast because I don't want to watch everything I want to show you guys how we achieved these pretty pretty looks on the model so right come come and select like this so right now sorry about the background noise 
least I know you can hear some consistencies in the noise, but I'm trying to do give you guys this video because some people requested for it yeah yeah uh, so sample out and paint over the blemish you want to remove from the model so i think this is fine so we're going to come right here and we're going to try to eliminate this little pimple yeah come sample remove sample So right now we are removing the blemishes. Remember when we are applying our our mixing, uh, we try we kind of flatten these blemishes which were on the model skin. So I think this is fine for this image. So right now what I'm going to do, I'm going to be doing the color grading first before I can do the dodging and burning. So for my color grading, I'm going to come right here and I'm going to create a black and white layer on top of this. I'm going to come to normal, then I'm going to come to multiply. As you can see, this is too much and she's dark. I'm going to come and I reduce my, my opacity to around 15, 15% will do. Come to my selective color. I'm going to add in a little bit of cyans and I'm going to come to yellows. I'm going to put it at 7. Then I'm going to come right to my gradient maps. Click on it. Then I'm going to come to... If you don't have all these, just right click here. Just click here, sorry. Click on photographic training and click append to have all these. So I'm going to use... I'm going to use this. Zapier Antique. Then I'm come, I come to my blending and I'm going to use multiply still. I'm going to come and I reduce on the opacity. So right now this is how our image looks. I'm going to put, I'm going to increase on the brightness for this image. Yeah, pull this all the way up to around 22. 22 can do for this image and I'm going to group all this shift click on the lower one ctrl G to put them in a group so this is the before color grading after before after you can see how amazing this looks so right now we're going to be doing our dodging and burning using the curves in Photoshop so I'm going to zoom in a little bit I'm going to come right here and I'm going to click on the curves adjustment layer pull this all the way up click ctrl i to invert that so this is going to be our dodge because when you are dodging we dodge the highlights and we burn the shadows and i'm going to come right here to my curve still and this time i'm going to click right in the middle and darken so click ctrl i and i'm going to name this burn so i'm going to put this in a group ctrl g on the keyboard come to my dodge layer click on it on the mask and create the black and white layer again and darken it all the way so i'm going to turn off my frequency separation layer because i want something to show us the originality of the highlights and the shadows so that's why i had to turn off my frequency separation layer Click on the uh, on the dodge first. Click on the brush tool, and this time you're going to paint over using a white brush. Make sure you toggle by clicking here. White is on the foreground because you're painting on a black mask. So you're going to start highlighting. Then we have some highlight here. You're going to highlight that too. And right here so we are dodging the shadows and we are going to be burning the highlights so I think this is fine we have some little highlight there come right here to the burn and this time you are going to darken yeah we burn there come to the nose area because we are adding shape 
for the model's face, so... I think this is fine. Come to the dodge, we forgot to burn these little, little vital areas. So I'm going to delete the black and white, and I'm going to show you guys the before and after turn on my freaking separation layer. So for our dodging and burning, this is the before, after, before, after. You can see if it is really, really much, just come and turn down the opacity. This time I'm going to use 76 for this image. So I'm going to come to my eye whitening for this model. And before I can do that, I'm going to create a stamp visible layer. Uh, sorry about this. I'm going to create a, a stamp visible layer. Shift or Control E on the keyboard to create that stamp visible layer, and click Control J. And I'm going to come to my filter, camera raw filter, and I'm going to whiten these eyes. And I'm going to be using my adjustment brush in Photoshop. So I'm going to zoom in right now. And I'm going to click on the adjustment brush, or you can click K on the keyboard. Make sure the temperature is at negative 33. The tint is at 69. The exposure is at 5. The highlights at 8, and whites at 6. And make sure your saturation is all the way down because you are going to be removing color from the eye. So negative 85 will do. So start painting over this white area of the model's eye. Make sure you take your time while doing this because and make sure when you're painting, make sure uh, paint over only the white area because we don't want the eye to look unnatural. As you can see, I have some highlight in the eye. I'm trying to enhance it more. Then I come to the second eye, click, and I'm going to paint over the white area. I'm kind of desaturating the white area of the eye because we had some reds in the eye so I think this is fine and I'm going to click OK so this is the before after you can see the difference in the eye area so I'm going to group all this I'm going to shift then select my freaking separation Control G so this is the before after before after and right now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to sharpen this image. I'm going to select group 3 and layer 1. And I'm going to come to layer, then merge layers. So I've merged everything we did. And I'm going to come right back to my freaking separation action. And I'm going to play it. Continue. This time I won't mind about the radius. And I'm going to come to my high frequency. And I'm going to click Ctrl J on the keyboard on the high frequency layer. Ctrl J. As you can see, this is too much sharpening. And I'm just going to come and reduce on the opacity. I'm going to leave it at around 29. So this is the before sharpening. After let me zoom in. This is the before. After you can see the image looks sharp and we have so much detail on the skin so guys this has been a story about how to edit using frequency separation in photoshop and we used two methods we used the lasso tool method and we used the mixer brush and we did the eye whitening we did the color grading and we did the dodging and burning so this is the before after before after you can see how amazing this looks and if you learned something from this video don't forget to hit the like button drop a comment in the comment section and if you haven't subscribed kindly subscribe to this channel i'm ronis from ronis photography thank you for watching till next time